Saints, what's up? Um, it's Sister with a Testimony, and I was out walking and checking out um, all of these little crawfish houses. Um, you know, you can see how big they are, just like if I put my foot next to it. Where's my foot? Oh, there it is. All right, so check it out little tiny crawfish house and then there's another one there and if I pan out they're kind of peppered throughout the yard in this little wet area this one's uh, like a mighty tower and I noticed he uh, put a ceiling a roof on his well it could be a her I don't know but um then I got this little teeny tiny one. This is a little bitty guy. I mean, it looks big, but man, you put a foot next to it, it ain't so big. And uh, it's just like a whole little community. And then um, I found the granddaddy of them all. This dude got to be a big honker. I mean, check it out. Check that out. That is. It's just, well, it's not quite as tall as my phone, but this one is. That one literally is as tall as my phone. It's like, wow, the Tower of Babel. Look at the intricate work that these little creatures do. Isn't that something? And... Check out the size of that hole. That's a big crawfish. I don't know about y'all, but him and this one's actually a bigger diameter hole. But he must have come out and found something to eat because his um, his thing is kind of knocked down. And got a little bitty one over there. But uh, no, I was checking it out. And they're kind of peppered through here in this area that's uh, been pretty damp and moist. Just a whole little community. And I got to thinking about how hard these little guys work. And they got to bring this dirt up because the dirt, if you notice, it doesn't match the dirt that's around it. So they gotta they gotta do some work to uh, to build these little I I guess tunnels. It's kind of cool. But uh, thinking about how these little communities of creatures get along and um, you know they have their little networks also just like we do but uh, this one right here just fascinates me because it's a good seven eight inches tall and uh, this little creature put a lot of effort into building this and um, I just seriously think about the Tower of Babel when the people were one language and they were all in harmony they were all in unity and they basically were building a tower to the heavens and uh, I don't think this little guy you know means to build a tower to the heavens but I can guarantee you that this little crawfish and that little crawfish and those little crawfish, I bet you they all communicate. What y'all want to bet? Seems like uh, if the crawfish can communicate, you would think that the human beings could figure this thing out. But there again, saints, everybody's got their own little thing, their own little way of being, their own little way of thinking. I was literally um, listening to an older woman the other day, and uh, she seriously got up and started bad-mouthing different, a different denomination than she was. And, you know, she went as far as to seriously um, 
seriously on the verge of, I believe, what is blasphemy. You know, when you come against the Holy Ghost and you take the Scripture and you twist the Scripture to make it sound like you want it to sound, and you put your poison out for the entire building to hear that poison, that poison is going to get to somebody because, you know, unlike these little crayfish that work hard and build in order to survive, a lot of folks go to church and go to uh, meetings just to um, either get a free meal or you know, fellowship a little bit. They seriously think that they're serving the Lord uh, by doing these sorts of things. And what we don't understand, saints, is just like these crawfish, they build their little monuments here so that they can um, have a lure or, you know, get in and out and go hunting. You know, I, I really don't know. But there's a reason that they build these things, and there's a reason that we build the body of Christ. And if we're going to build something, shouldn't we build up and not... tear down? Saints, there's a reason that the crawfish builds this little kingdom and there's a reason that it's torn down. What makes no sense to me is why we build our towers and then we want to tell everybody that our towers are the only way to be. Instead of building folks up, we're tearing them down. Now, if you know the scripture and you know the word of God, you know that God came down and he said, you know what? They might just accomplish this if we don't go stop them. So we're going to just uh, scramble the, the way that they communicate so that they can never build a tower of idolatry to the little G-Gods. Our Father in Heaven knows what we need. And if He tears down your idolatrous Babel Tower, then to God be the glory. But you are not supposed to be tearing folks down. You're supposed to be building them up. When I hear somebody take a scripture and twist it, and tell the people, this is what thus saith the Lord. And you got preachers sitting in their midst that say they know God. They say they know the scriptures. They say that they would sit this person down if they thought it was necessary. God help us. Why am I yelling? Because of all the traffic. God help us. There's a reason that the Tower of Babel was where God confused the languages. Because, saints, let me tell you what. There is one language in God's body. And that is love, that is acceptance, and that is forgiveness. And that is coming at you with the truth and love and saying, if you're living in sin, you cannot go to heaven. I don't care how big you build your tower. I don't care how big you babble, and I don't care how much you say you've been saved for 50 years, and I don't care how many times you say that you're filled with the Holy Ghost when you would sit or stand by or even speak against somebody else and what they know to be the truth and how the Holy Spirit is leading them and guiding them. And what really makes no sense to me, saints, is if we know that God changed up the languages and His Word says that tongues are real and that tongues are not just a language, but they are unknown angels' language. And you got people standing 
building whole denominations against tongues. You got whole denominations standing, building denominations for tongues. What is wrong with you? Read the Bible. And if you don't read the Bible and understand it, somebody does. His name is Holy Spirit. And let me tell you what he did. He seen that people were unified. And it, because of that unity and they could all speak the same language and communicate, they were going to build a tower of idolatry to the heavens. And in God's grace and in God's compassion and God's mercy, he stopped them and changed their languages. He said in his word, he would come and he would give his people a perfect language so that they could understand him. Saints, if you've got the true Holy Spirit, you're going to have discernment. You're going to know if a tongue is of the devil. You're going to know if a tongue is of the Holy Spirit. And if you're sitting there in your bitterness because of somebody else and you're defiling many through a root of bitterness that you have allowed to grow, God help you. That's all I can say is, God, have mercy on our souls. Lord, let us be more like the crawfish and build our tower so that we can survive. Lord, help us to understand that by destroying others and blaspheming your Holy Spirit and destroying other people's understandings, through poison that's coming through a root of bitterness. Lord, we need to humble ourselves and pray and seek your face. We need to humble ourselves. Lord, help us. Help us to know when the time and the place is to share what is on our hearts, Father God. And let us be motivated by love, not bitterness. Saints, I'm crying out to the Lord. I'm crying holy, holy. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. He does not destroy people. I've seriously seen the devil move and operate through people that are called to be saints and say that they're saints. And they would do anything to shut down the move of the Holy Spirit. But saints, I'm here to tell you the devil is a liar. The devil is a damned liar. The Bible says that him and all his imps are damned for eternity and they will spend that in the lake of fire. Saints, I'm begging you, don't deceive yourself into thinking that you can tear something down that God has called holy and think that you're going to build your own little tower of Babel and your idolatry, and your hate, and your bitterness and disgust for someone else. Get delivered. And if you are delivered, saint, don't you think it's time you spoke up for the voiceless? Saints, I could go on and on about the Tower of Babel. But when we get up and we start babbling, and we twist scriptures, and we got saints sitting there, knowing that it's poison and they're supposed to be the protectors and they say nothing God help us all forgive us Father for we obviously haven't got a clue what we're doing Lord forgive me for even thinking they don't have a clue for what they, they are doing because they know well what they're doing Father God they know what they're doing, Lord. And I ask you, Father God, to have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy on those that would call themselves a saint of God and try to destroy someone else. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Father God, help us to love one another. And Father God, let us learn from the past building our own towers of Babel will not 
get anything done for the kingdom of God. Father God, I ask, ask you to have mercy on us. Forgive us, Lord. And Lord, those that are ignorant, you are the one that can reveal the truth. And Lord, those are the ones that are hard-hearted, that are bitter, that are angry, that are full of hate, and they think that they are saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. I ask you to wake them up, Father God. Lord, what's coming on this earth, it'd be better to be a crawfish. I plead and apply the blood of Jesus to your mind, your will, your emotions. If you're offended, then you need to grow up. And if you're offended, you need to go back to the Bible and you, you need to look at it and you need to read it and you need to study it and know that offense is the bait of Satan. Do not bite the bait, saints. Most of the time, these little crawfish are real good fish bait. But offense is a better bait if you're Satan. I declare and decree that no offense will come through the Word of God. The Word of God that says, Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come unto the Father except by Him. The Word of God says emphatically, if you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven. The Word of God says that if you allow a root of bitterness to spring up in you, you will defile many. The Word of God says, the blood of Jesus speaks greater things than the blood of Abel. The Bible says that there will be many that look for a path and they will not take the narrow path because of self. They would rather be on the wide path to destruction, but narrow is the path and few there be that find it and walk therein. I don't care how many sermons you preach and I don't care how many titles of pastor, apostle, evangelist, prophet, bishop, Sunday school teacher, pew sitter, saint, sister or brother. I don't care how many titles you got. Mama, daddy, aunt, uncle, brother, sister. What is your tower of Babel? What idolatry is your tower building? Father God, have mercy on us. Let those that have ears to hear, hear what thus saith the Spirit. Let those that see with spiritual eyes see past the Tower of Babel into eternity. Father God, I praise you and I thank you for grace. I thank you for mercy. I thank you for holiness. I thank you for sanctification. I thank you, Father God, that you have revealed your word. Salvation must be worked out in fear and trembling by every single human being. Sanctification is a choice. The Lord will not sanctify something that has decided to be filled with bitterness, hate, anger, or any other sin. What is your tower saying? It's not a tongue. This ain't about tongues. This is about sin. In the body of Christ not on the outside, in the body of Christ. Let God have mercy on us. Let us turn from our wicked ways. And Father God, I thank you that although poison and bitterness spewed out from someone that calls themselves a pastor, your Spirit, Father God, filled the atmosphere, saved two people's souls, touched them in a way that only you could, Father God, and they too will have to decide if they're going to do the same things. At the end of the day, Father God, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Father God, you came that we might have life and that we might have life more abundantly. Father God, let us remember that you alone are worthy of our praise and you alone are the interpreter of your scriptures. 
And Father God, let us be careful that we not blaspheme something that you have called holy. Father God, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. I love everybody. I accept everybody. I forgive everybody. I don't condone their behaviors. And I will tell them the truth and love. When I hear you say, be still, keep quiet, I obey, Lord, but it doesn't mean I don't want to speak up. Thank you, Father, for grace. Thank you, Father, for mercy. You alone are worthy of my praise, my honor. All the glory, all the honor, all the praise, every ounce of my spirit being filled with you. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You are welcome in this place. Sister with a testimony. God bless y'all. I love you. Call out to the Lord. He's the only one that can forgive you. He's the only one that can save you. He's the only one that can set you free. I plead the blood of Jesus over you to hide, protect, and keep you in all your ways. Don't be offended, saints. Be mended. God bless you. I love you.